Thank you to everyone at home. Thank you, Bishop, for having me up here. Um, yeah, my, my vocation story, um, the Lord, it, it's really Mary, you know, bringing me to Jesus. You know, the theme of my vocation story that I really like telling is it's the, the, my two moms, my mom, my earthly mom, and my heavenly mother, Mary. So how kind of, growing up for me, I grew up in a big Catholic family, one of six kids, uh, cradle Catholic, Catholic high school my entire life. And my parents really sacrificed kind of to create that foundation of the faith, knowing that, you know, it's the true faith. They're going to Mass every Sunday, you know, praying your rosaries with the family. Um, and it was beautiful growing up. You know, going to high school, you kind of you lose a spark a little bit. You're like, you want all feeling and emotional. You want that relationship with Jesus, but you don't really know how to navigate that with the, what the world's telling you. And, you know, with sports and stuff and high school life, it's just like, okay, well, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing whatever. You know, I'm going to Sunday Mass. I'm doing what my parents tell me to do. So I'm all good, you know. And then when I go to college, I'll be fine, you know. I'll keep the same routine going. I'll keep doing the same things. It's all good, you know. And that's exactly what didn't happen um, when I did go to college. I went to Duquesne in downtown Pittsburgh. And, uh, yeah, my first year there, my first semester, I had plans. You know, I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to get good grades. I'm going to have a little bit of fun. You know, it turns out that little bit of fun turned into too much fun. And, uh, you know, instead of diving into what Jesus wanted for me, I really dived into what the, uh, the world wanted for me, which was, you know, the party culture of college, you know, getting a girlfriend, getting good grades still, but, you know, doing what I want to do. You know, the pride and the selfishness of not really, you know, choosing Jesus, not choosing the faith, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. But, you know, going to mass on Sunday. Yeah. You know, I'm tired, you know giving it my all and, you know, everything, eh, no, you know, praying rosary, nah, um, just really making Jesus low on the list, you know, and he let me do it for a couple years. He let me do it. You know, in the eyes of the world, I had everything that I could want. You know, I had a beautiful girlfriend at the time. I had a, internships. I was being very successful in school. And I was like, great, this is great. You know, this is awesome. I'm doing really great. And lo and behold, I go into the summer before my junior year and I get just rocked. I mean, absolutely rocked. Like it felt like my whole life was collapsing from underneath me. Um, was anxious, didn't know what I was doing with my life, was super insecure about a lot of things, you know, depressive. And I was like, what the heck is going on here, Lord? Like, you're like what's going on? Like the, the Jesus started coming back to my life a little bit. He was really knocking on the door loud, but I still said, nope, nope, uh, you know, not yet. Not yet, I'm not ready. And I get into the first semester of my junior year and I'm, I come back from home, from being home for Thanksgiving break. I'm uh, Sunday night talking to my mom on the phone and she chews me out. Uh, it was probably like an hour and a half, two hour conversation. Very raw, very beautiful. She's like, Xavier, you're not yourself. You haven't been yourself for two years and you're miserable. It's because you've lost your faith. And she just kept laying into me and it was totally anointed by the Holy Spirit. So that's where my first mom comes in, my earthly mom. And she said to me, you know what, Xavier? I think you need to break up with your girlfriend and I think you need to go back to the faith and practice strongly again. And I was like, you know, mom, you're right. I do. I've been a piece of uh, crap for two years now. So I'm going to break up my girlfriend right now. Uh, and it was probably 1130 at night. God bless her. Um, went over and did that. And she told me, go right to the chapel after and pray a novena to Our Lady in Door of Knots. So I get to the Duquesne Chapel up there and I was just praying my rosary, just crying because, you know, I broke up with a girl I was dating for a while and get to the third mystery. And after the third mystery, you pray a little meditation. And after the meditation, I just kind of poured out my heart to God and said, Lord, give me a community. Give me someone, anyone to help me with this new journey to faith. And lo and behold, one of my uh, random guy came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder right after I prayed that. And he was like, hey, I saw you praying here. Uh, I want to invite you to this prayer group we have here on campus, a charismatic prayer group. And I was like, wow, that was an instant answer to my prayers. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I didn't know that man would be one of my brother seminarians here that I journey to the priesthood, hopefully, um, with. So that was a beautiful grace. And that's where, you know, Mama Mary comes in, as Father Steve likes to say. She really saved me. She brought me to Jesus. She heard my heart. I begged for her intercession, and she brought me back to the faith. She brought me back to which, what I need to do, you know, and I ultimately to my vocation to her, you know, she was the one by my rosaries, praying to her, learning devotion to her, you know, that seed sprung up in my heart and I chose the answer to call here in Pittsburgh. Um, so, you know, we're really, my vocation the centers around is just, I encourage all of you to go to Mary, you know, of course, all my brother seminarians to have devotion to Mary, but for all of you at home, just to go to Mary, bring everything to her intercession, bring everything to her most immaculate heart and she'll bring you to Jesus and she'll help to change your life. Um, so thank you, 
Thank you everyone at home for listening to my story.